Hey y'all, so we are out. It's a Saturday here. We are all here, which is kind of rare anymore. We are getting some things accomplished. We're moving animals around is actually what we're doing. Let me show you, Lane is right in front of us. So we are on our way back to the cows. We have a few things to accomplish. We have a cow we have to get out of there pretty soon um, that is gonna be a cold cow. It's actually Lane's cow. I'll tell you more about that probably on a different video. And then it's time to get our bulls out. If you look at a table or calendar or whatever for gestation for cows, if you don't want your cows getting bred right now or especially for the next couple months because you will be having calves dead of winter. So we're a little late to this, but hoping it's not really gonna matter because all of them should be bred. If they're not bred at this point, we got a problem. So we're going back here to build a little corral to get them out. We've got some more animals shuffling around to do. Just lots going on today. So come along with us. So it is a different day, obviously, and the kids and I wound up, we had a great day the other day. Lane is not here a whole lot anymore, so when he is, we make good use of the time and we got so much done. A lot of it, just honestly, it was a day we just had to put the camera down and get to work. So I'm gonna kind of take you around and show you some of the stuff we accomplished, some pretty big things. One of them really kind of stunk and it's just part of life on the farm. Um, and that mooing is coming from the wrong place. That's why I'm stopping and looking. There's a calf in the wrong place. So got to figure that out. But um, we wound up getting that corral set up. We're not ready to do anything yet. We're gonna do that another day, but it is ready to go when we get ready to use it. It's not big, it's not fancy, no big holding pens or anything. Just a place to get a few animals up because they are over a mile away from the house and we can get them up back there without having to drive them all the way up to the corral stress on them it's just it's a headache so this will be much better so let's talk about the crummy news So you can see that is our Berkshire boar. We have put him in with our old spot sows because they had babies here several months ago. They've already been weaned. Those are the ones I've been showing you uh, out in the front pen that they're weaned, they're growing, doing great. Those mama sows need to be bred. Um, and I have mentioned on multiple videos that Dot, um, we love Dot. We got him from Hidden Heights Farm over in Oklahoma. 
We are actually going and speaking at their Oki homesteading event. So we're really excited about that. But we went and got Dot over there. He was a piglet. He was a boar, good looking boar, very good nature, just really pleased with him. We were just really excited to meet them too and connect with them. Um, and it was just an overall good experience. They had no idea that, you know, what Dot would turn out to be or not to be. That's just how it is when you buy and sell animals. And over the years, Dot has wound up, he is sterile. So I have mentioned that before. He's never fathered piglets, just, I, he doesn't even smell like a normal boar does. So we're really thinking like he may not even be producing the hormones to do that. We, we really just don't know, but he is sterile. So then comes the question of what to do now, what to do with him. Just figured out where this calf came from. It's Miracle's calf and it's just, it's one pen over. So I'm betting this situation is gonna take care of itself. You can see it. Now it's down there, it's gonna ball for its mama. So that is not the best fence. It's just a side fence in between these two little paddocks at our house. Probably just went right through it. Probably got shocked. So it's probably not wanting to go back through it, but sorry for that noise in the background. So Ben and I have gone back and forth on what to do with Dot. We, a long time ago, processed a boar and I thought that it smelled kind of musky. That when you process boars, there's people who raise pigs and they never cut and castrate their pigs. They raise boars all the time. In fact, we did it for a time um, for customers. We were just up front about it. It was before YouTube. Um, we used to raise pigs for someone before YouTube. It's what helped us get our start raising pigs, and that's what we did. He didn't mind that they weren't cut. He didn't cut his own, so that's what we did. And then we just decided, you know, we just didn't want to be taking a chance on any of the meat having boar taint, which you can have taint in female pigs as well. I know a lot of people don't know that, but you can. Um, but we just decided, you know, we were going to do what we could to ensure that people who were paying all this money to get farm fresh pork, that they were getting the best possible product. So that's what we did. Started doing that. Ben's been out working his bees, another spring thing that's going on around here. But we wound up with a full grown boar at one point that we had to do something with. I honestly don't even remember all the circumstances we've been through so many animals on this farm, but we wound up processing him. I thought he had a musky smell, Ben did not. And customers, we just told them exactly what it was. We had him processed into sausage. They bought him and, and were just fine with it. That was back before VW Family Farm even existed. It was just us raising some pigs and things. Um, but due to that, just having done this before, we've gone back and forth and back and forth and back and forth on what to do with Dot. Did you get your bees worked? Mm, not very many of them. No, why? Five. Why? Maybe six. I'm just too thorough. Too thorough? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to go through every frame. I know I stopped doing that. Uh, about halfway done through them and just started finding eggs, brood, larva. I'm good to go. I see swollen places on your hand. Yeah, I got stung a few times. One of them was very angry. Very angry? And they started all getting angry here as the sun set. So I quit. So I'm telling them about Dot and everything. So we did the best thing, I think. We compromised. Ben wanted to take him to our processor. We had a date for pigs to go actually, actually today. Uh, we took them yesterday, but I did not. I just, from what I've read online and everything, I'm just being upfront with you guys. I know I'm gonna get hammered for this, but I don't care. I'm gonna tell you truthfully how it is around here and, and you can just take it how you want. But I just wanted to put him down. He was sterile. He's a full grown boar. We have tried you guys to just give him away. Uh, people stop by all the time wanting pigs and we've tried to give him away. You've, anytime they stop for a pig, you're like, I, tried I, to talk them into I got it. a boar. <laughs> no. <laughs> and they don't want it. Um, so I just wanted to dispose of him. That's the honest truth. I, I don't want to put anything in our meat supply. That, don't want to ruin our reputation. Absolutely not. No. And I don't either. And I don't want to eat a whole boar's worth of sausage myself that because he's big so anyway we compromised so 
So on our compromise, I didn't want to just put him down and, and waste him. I, uh, I wanted to take him to the processor, but I agree with Andrew. I don't want to ruin our reputation. So anyway, he went yesterday with the group and they were supposed to put him down today. I haven't heard from him, so that is good news. Cause I told him specifically when I dropped him off that if he had the least bit of smell, I wanted to know and we was just gonna dispose of him. And so before when we have taken a boar, I told you we used to do that. We got a call one time and, and they believed he smelled. Mm -hmm. um, we wound up, that was back when we were just eating it ourselves anyway. Uh, we wound up processing him and I thought he had a slight smell. It won't make you sick. There's nothing wrong with eating it. It's just, it might be undesirable. We wound up eating him. Ben did not taste anything. I didn't smell it. Didn't but smell they do anything. Sell, they do say females are more sensitive to that smell. And, and then also I've been hog hunting for wild hogs and you kill a wild hog that has boar taint, you can smell him before you even get close to him. I mean, 50 yards away, you, you start smelling him. They so this was nothing. Oh no, no. So anyway, we do know that we didn't ask them to call. They just called and were like, hey, what do you want us to proceed? What do you want us to do? That was back when our processor was about 10 miles away. I think we went and got a sample, yeah. cooked it, and we we're like, yeah, go ahead. We weren't gonna waste all that because it, it was fine. So we didn't even have to ask them to call and they did. So we are, we've asked them and then I had to call back this morning to give the instructions for the rest of the pigs. I talked to them again. I said, call if there is the slightest smell they haven't, so like Ben said, I think that's good news. Um, so we've asked him, he's gonna be boxed separately. So if anyone is like, eh, I don't know about this, we will know exactly where that's yep. at in our inventory. So For sure. it's a sad day. Um, we had hopes that he would be our new breeder. Um, and that's why you've seen the Berkshire out there. Um, He's gonna do until we get the other two grown up. Right. So we do have two more breeders. And that They're was the first works. one, first boar we've ever had. And we've been doing this, what, 10 plus years? That's the first boar we've ever had that was sterile. Right. Never, never had that happen before. So that, I would say that's a rarity. And again, this is nothing against where he came from. No. We love them. I would go buy another pig from them if they had one to sell. You just can't tell these things. I've showed you guys before some different kind of quirky things that have happened with pigs. We've had probably two now that have been deaf. We had one that got down in their back end, um, had a problem walking. We've just had some weird things. Um, but how many? It just happens. But how many hundreds of pigs have we grown? Right. And it, it's just one of those things, it just happens. So um, we hate it because we wanted to keep him, but just trying to let you know, someone asked weekly, about Dot, some people call him Spot, and I always know they're talking about Dot, so I just answer them. Um, but just wanted to let you in on what's going on. That's that's the status. So we wound up, our barn is right back here behind us, and Ben wound up setting up an alleyway. <laughs> <laughs> from that end over there. Yeah, from way down there. That's where you see me feed those Berkshires. And that's the end that caught on fire a year ago. Right all the way through, past the camper and out that side. So that's how the Berkshire boar got from where he is to where he went. It was fairly uneventful. We had one of the sows get out <laughs> with him. We had to get her back in, but. She actually, I think helped because yeah. she's a little more tame than he is. She led him out, I think. But anyway, it that's worked. how he's out there. This morning, actually, you said you saw him and he wasn't looking so perky. No, no, he, uh, I seen him when he was out there with the sows and one of the big sows, I don't think it was short tail, it may have been big mama, I don't know who it was, but it was one of the bigger ones. She was putting a whooping on him. Uh, yeah. You, Let would me think, you would think the male would be able to handle itself, but. He's young and they're big yeah. and they're a group and. They're not used to him. No, he's an outsider, so. So you can see he's tired. 
He's got five sows to service, and then we will have some little Old Spot Berkshire crosses. The two Berkshire mamas are due this month, beginning. Now, they might not have got bred the first time, so it could be another month, but... Um, I've seen one of them the other day that she was really starting to show. Yeah, so... So it, it could She be may be this month. Yeah. I, I'm excited about those. Those will be cute and fun to raise something a little different. Something a little different. And we've liked the Berkshire meat. They put on yeah. some good weight, like in the... Um, rear hams yeah, and all that wide. kind of stuff. They're so. wide front shoulders, wide rear end. Uh, they're not quite as long as the old spots. So the difference is you're going to get more ham meat, more shoulder meat off them, but the uh, the old spots you're going to get more bacon, more pork chops and things like that. So anyway, we'll see about that. And when I take you guys back to the woods the next time, there's dramatically less back there now. How many buckets are you feeding now? Two. And you was feeding? Oh, 14. I don't even remember at the height of it, but <laughs> there was a lot of pigs back there. We went to feed today and Emily hadn't been back there in a couple days and there was only two buckets and she got out with me. I said, you don't have to get out. I can carry two buckets. Yeah, she yeah. said, oh, two That's buckets. Nice. That's a nice change. So anyway, we've got animals shuffled around everywhere. So they went with us and we set the corral up at the back. I told them we're gonna be shuffling around back there. Just lots of shuffling, spring shuffling. Gotta bring the bulls up. Yep, he's been working bees. Bees are going good. We're gonna be taking you guys probably, we've had some comments wanting some bee videos. So we'll kind of try to keep you updated on what's going on with the bees. Um, don't know if we'll do bee dedicated videos. We'll see. So I put this question out on Facebook. Um, I'm asking, would you be interested in a beginner's beekeeping class hands-on? Now, I haven't seen very many of them around, and I know when I first started beekeeping, I wish that people would have taught me hands-on how to we pick the to frames up. Yeah, but there's a whole lot of difference in yes. looking at screens, looking at books, reading, even watching YouTube videos. Uh, there's still a difference in getting hands-on. You can ask that specific question that crosses your mind and see it right there most of the time. So if you're interested in a hands-on beginner's beekeeping class, I don't have a date nailed down. I'm just trying to see how much interest there is in it. Um, uh, just shoot us an email, comment here, whatever. Uh, it don't have a date because I ain't nailed nothing down for sure, but if I do it, it would probably be the end of this month, beginning of next month, so. Let us know. We're thinking about doing maybe some hands-on classes, different things, um, maybe locally, maybe, I don't know if some of you would want to travel in for it. I don't know. We've traveled for some stuff over the years, oh, yeah. but we enjoy that. We enjoy a good road trip every now and then, but I don't know if other people do. So you guys just let us know. Um, we would be willing to share what we've learned over the years if that's something that people are interested in. So I've got to go to the greenhouse and up pot some plants. You want to go with me? Sure. All right, let's go. y'all well it got dark on us yesterday and it's back to get dark again well, i'm gonna take you guys in here and show you uh the plants we got up potted and then we're gonna finish this video where we started
One note right before we leave. This lettuce was actually growing in the floor of this greenhouse. These rocks in here will just sprout when the seeds fall, they'll sprout. Um, we've had lots of stuff grow on the floor, on the ground in here before. And so just decided to give those a try. The lettuce that I actually planted, eh, it's doing okay. And I thought, Ben mentioned it and I thought, eh, why not? There's lettuce growing right there on the ground and it's doing good. So we're gonna give that a go. That's our favorite kind, that's Mir lettuce, um, M-U-I-R. And it's a really good greenhouse lettuce. It's just a really good lettuce overall. Doesn't have any bitterness to it. As, as it starts to get warmer, lettuce will start to get a bit bitter and that just doesn't have any bitterness. It's our favorite kind. So gonna give that a go. We're about to head back to the back and see if we can't get the bulls up and get them moved. We're going right back to where we started, right back to where we built the pen at the beginning of this video. So let's go. We got them, that went so well. We we're about to go drop these at the front. Lane's cow, you saw us get her up. She has got calcifications on her face. That's been going on for a couple years. Has not slowed her down at all. We were in contact with the vet when it first started to make sure it wasn't tumors or anything like that. It's just basically bone growing on her face. Um, it's got to a point that we are gonna call her because um, it's pitiful and it's starting to interfere with like her sinuses and stuff and we're just not going to make an animal suffer she should be far along bred she's still open um she's just kind of in more of a decline and so she is going to be cold you saw the two bulls loaded up no problem not a bit scared of them i love their temperament they're just going to go up to the front and then um be left out of the cows for a couple months at least maybe more um, until we put them back in to breed the cows for the next season. So new babies are coming soon. And um, yeah, it's just a really exciting time. Lots of spring things going on here. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys on the next one. God bless.